Today I'm going to replace the front sprockets or chain rings as the manufacturer calls them on my Scott scale 960 large frame and it originally came with a 36 tooth and a 22 tooth dual uh, sprockets on the front. I'm also going to do a video in replacing the cassette. I'm replacing the chain, the cassette, and the two sprockets at the beginning of the season here. And uh, I'm going to start off by showing you how to replace these front sprockets or chain rings, as the manufacturer calls them. So I have the new cassette. This is a cassette that came on it. This is the same as the original equipment, which is a 11 by 36 tooth. And I want a little bit more high end larger gear so I went with a 38 and 24 replacement chain ring so this crank set can come with either the 36 22 or it can come with the 38 24 so I'm switching uh, to the higher gears the reason for that is I do mostly gravel road riding I do a little bit of trail riding but mostly I do gravel road and I'm using this large gear. I figure if I put a bigger gear on the, I'll use the smaller gear a little bit more. But normally I, I just get away with using my large 36 tooth gear. So that's got the most wear. So here we go. Um, I got the chain removed. I did a video on how to replace the chain. So if you want to know how to replace the chain, a couple handy tools is you can make this out of a coat hanger or an old spoke but a coat hanger works just fine that's a great tool for installing and removing the chain especially when you have a connecting link like I do start with removing the two five millimeter uh, crank bolts on the left hand side and remove the little spacer. My uh, um, lash tool for this uh, end cap that takes up the lash and the bearings has a little piece on it that helps you pull that little spacer out. Make sure you remember the orientation on that spacer. So the inside bolt goes through this hole, outside bolt goes through the, so you can put it in and then pivot it down. Then remove that end cap. This tool is nice. It's it's by Park, but it's designed with this little piece that helps get that spacer out. But with that little piece on it, on my particular crank, it hits hits the arm right here. So you can't spin it all the way around. Which if it didn't have that, it would spin. Maybe on other crank arms it doesn't do that but on mine it does so then it's a matter of just bumping it off it's splined and has a notch has a flat spot on it so where's my flat spot right there just bump it out then shouldn't take much but it should be tight bearings shouldn't be loose if they are then you want to replace that bottom bracket of those bearings those come as an assembly and unscrew they're not supposed to be disassembled so you can purchase those okay so I'll move over here to the bench have for the smaller sprocket have four t30 bolts on it let's remove those that's the four t30 
screws on the small bracket and the bracket just comes right off on the large sprocket or chain ring it has these these nuts that are on the inside that need a large screwdriver or a special tool that has a tip on it you can get that from park i'm going to use a large screwdriver but they're also t30 to get those out so here's the screws on the outside of the crank I'm able to hold that nut with just my finger and use my T30 screwdriver to take those out. They are splined slightly and they might have had a little bit of uh, Loctite on them, but uh, I didn't have to use a tool on the backside at all. But a very large screwdriver would also work to hold those. That's it, then the chain ring just comes right off. I'm going to clean this up with a parts cleaner, and I'm going to clean up all of my screws with a wire brush. They're all fine thread, and they all had Loctite on them, so I want to make sure that uh, the threads are clean so the Loctite will adhere to the threads when I put it back together and clean them up with parts cleaner too. Remember to use safety glasses when spraying these little nooks and crannies will come back on you, hit you in the face. There's the model number of my crank assembly. Notice it's a 175 millimeters. It's the the length, the throw. Replacing my chain rings so they don't require cleaning. I'll probably clean up the smaller one later because that's still serviceable. I could reuse it at a later date if I'd like to. And again, with these screws, I'm gonna put them in the vise and then hit them with a, a wire brush, with a brass brush to make sure these threads are cleaned up so that the uh, Loctite will adhere to them good. But they look pretty clean now after being in the solvent. Again, here's the model number and the length of my crank assembly. So notice before you clean this crank assembly that it does have a spacer right here. It's not a true seal, I don't think, but it's more of a, a spacer. Kind of, it kind of feels like a seal right there. So make sure you don't lose that. So once we've got all the parts cleaned up, we're ready for reassembly. I went to the manufacturer's website to get the torque specs and I found this maintenance manual online and I printed out this page. It's an extract from the manual for the double gear type. That's what I have. There's also a page for the single gear type and the triple. There are different torques for the, the triple, so it's different kinds of nuts on it. So be cautious there if you have a triple type uh, ring, gear type, then use the right page. So this is my double, and it's pointing out, make sure that the, this stud that's on the chain ring is lined up with the, with the lever, with the arm. So again, there's my T30 socket that I used and it's telling me 12 to 14 Newton meters or 8.8 .8 to 10.3 foot pounds for the outside ring for the larger ring or then for the smaller 
16 to 17 newton meters or 11.8 to 12.5 foot pounds for that and i'm going to use a little a drop of lectite on each of those so that's really going to be a wet torque reading and that's not a lot of torque don't over tighten them The small chain ring gets positioned with the notch in line with the crank arm and with the mark side of the smallest chain ring facing inward. Set the smallest chain ring so that the convex section is positioned under the crank arm. Once you've got the smaller chain ring bolts torqued to approximately 12 foot pounds, you're ready to reassemble the crank arms onto the bike. I use a good synthetic wheel bearing grease for my cars. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this red synthetic grease, just a little bit here. Bearings are sealed inside here. This is just for the, the crank arm assembly to go back in smoothly. I'm gonna put a little here on the shaft. There was some on the shaft when I took it out. Just a light coat, help it slide in. A little bit on the, on the splines here on the end and a little bit on the threads here. So that looks good. Then insert the crank arm assembly back into the bottom bracket. Push it all the way in. As I'm installing my assembly, I've discovered that uh, my gear hits on my front derailleur so I'm gonna to have to move that up just a little bit to clear my new gears. Four millimeter yeah. Allen key on that derailleur bracket to loosen it. Once I have that bracket loose, I'm gonna move it just enough to clear that large chain ring. Once I've got that front derailleur moved down a little bit, or up, in this case, up, I'm going to retighten it. It'll no doubt have to be readjusted once I get the chain back on to make sure it's operating properly. Before I install the left side crank arm, make sure this seal is back on. Make sure it's on there. 180 degrees out from the right side crank arm and make sure the flats are lined up. Slide it all the way on, push them together. Make sure you've cleaned up the bolts, the threads on the bolts with a wire brush and because uh, they're partly exposed so they're dirty. So to get a good torque on them, make sure you've cleaned them up. Then insert the spacer plate. 
and the inside bolt. So the two crank bolts are just hand tight at this point. And I'm gonna install that cap. Should easily thread in. Let's use my tool. These are ball bearings in the, this bottom frame, in the bottom bracket. So there should be no play in the end, but you don't need to torque this more than hand tight. So the ball bearings don't require a preload, side load. So if you under tighten it, you're probably going to get some looseness in this bottom bracket. So you'll have to go back later, loosen up these bolts and retighten this, tighten it a little more. You'd certainly do that as part of the maintenance on your bike. If you get it too tight, you're going to overload the bearings. You're going to put a side load on the bearings. And if it's not too much, it's probably just going to wear in. Probably not a big deal. But don't use anything more than this particular tool here to tighten them. If you do, you'll put too much load on it. So again, just spin freely. And then I'm going to tighten these bracket bolts, tighten them together. Quarter to a half a turn each. So I get them snug. Once I get them snug, I'll torque them. And again, torque them together. Good even loading. Okay, so that concludes this video. If you found it helpful, please let me know in the comments and please subscribe.